In this video, we're going to go over converting our application to Django 1.8 and also using the Django mechanism of configuring Jenja for our application. First thing that we need to do to start is we need to install the latest Django and the latest Django Jenja. So that will open our requirements file and change it from 1.72 to 1.8. We're also going to change our Django Jenja from 1.0 to 1.3.3. This is the latest Django Jenja and it also supports Django 1.8. The reason we're going to use Django Jenja instead of trying to configure it ourselves is because if you configure it yourself then it adds a lot more complexity and you're going to spend probably a good hour maybe three or four trying to get everything configured just right and to have all the helpers that you need in the places that you need them whereas Django Jenja just takes care of it for you. As such we'll see how easy it is to convert from using Jenja in the old mechanism and Jinja in the new mechanism. Now that we've installed our latest requirements of Django 1.8 and the new Jinja, we're going to open up our settings file for our application. And in that settings file, we're going to make sure that we have Django Jinja installed in our third party apps. And then we're going to jump down to where we have the rest of our template configuration. And then we're just going to delete all of it because with the new template system in Django 1.8, we have new sets of configurations that we need to run. We're going to create a templates list. And then inside of that templates list, we're going to configure our application to be able to use Django templates. This works by default. We're just setting it the way we have it so that we can use it as a fallback. So in this configuration, you see we have backend, DIRS, app DIRS, options. Backend means that's the backend that we want to use, so in this case we're using Django templates. DIRS is when you want to explicitly set some location of some directories. App DIRS means that we want to use the template directories in our applications. And then options is where we can set the context processors that we currently have in our application to be used with Django templates. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to configure Django Jenja with our templates list. We're going to do that with another dictionary. And you'll notice we start with the backend of Django Jenja, backend.jenja2. This says that we're going to use our Jenja2 templating engine. We're going to use AppDurs so that we're going to pull in templates from our applications. We're also setting the location of templates in our base directory, like we have before. And then we're setting a bunch of options. In the options, we're setting the match extension of .jenja. We're doing some auto escaping and auto reloading and then setting a translation engine. These are just good defaults that the Django Jinja project recommends setting. So with that we're actually ready to use our templates. However we are doing a couple of calls in our templates that won't work right now. Before we had the user object available to us at the template level but now we need to make sure that we get the user object based on the current request. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify our templates. We're going to go into our base template and modify everywhere that says user and do request.user. We're also going to go into our dashboard page and edit the user object there. So with that we're actually ready to run this and take a look at it working. So we just do our server. You see everything validates. So with our server running we're going to open it up in our browser and there we go it works. We're going to go ahead and log in. And there we see it works still. So with that we are using Django 1.8 with the new template configuration system to set up Jenja templates and we're using Django Jenja to save us some overhead in configuration. 